Shalom. Shalaki. First and foremost, I want to give honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakal Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. All right, I'm going to title this lesson The Women Don't Have the Fear of Yahweh in Them. Now, there may be some women who are trying, but when it comes down to it, man, women don't have the fear of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai inside of them they claim they in the truth they know they a lot of them know the scriptures or have heard the scriptures concerning them and what they should do concerning their husbands and what a woman's role is how a woman should should be and they willingly ignore it they go against it you know uh because of their emotions and overall just um they don't have the true fear of the most high man you know they can't let go of what they've been taught, you know, in the world. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, they still got sweet Jesus on the mind. Sweet Jesus on the mind, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so let's get the scripture, man. You know, let's just go over a couple of these scriptures, man. What the what the what the scriptures say about what a man, what a woman should do towards her her husband, you know. And we know that according to the scriptures, um. um uh, uh, sex, the consummation uh, uh, of the marriage, the sex portion, i.e., the portion which would produce the tokens of virginity, which would be the the the, the hymen being burst or the cherry being popped, and the blood coming out onto that white sheet. That was the proof that the marriage was a uh, was a good marriage, you know. <laughs> and now there were ceremonies and things that were held in the ancient world. But there was no there was no such documents as as Esau does it today. It wasn't much different than how Esau puts it forth. And sometimes as little as a verbal agreement was enough for two to become uh, one flesh. You know. Uh, such as in the case of uh, Isaac and uh, Rebecca, the parents agreed to let her leave. When she approached Isaac, he took her into the tent, and uh, that was that. You know. They became married. He, they consummated the marriage in his in his mother's tent, um, and and that was enough, you know. And uh, I believe that's that's the correct. Yeah, Isaac and Rebecca. So anyway, um, so let's get the scripture, man. Ephesians five and thirty three. Nevertheless, what let one every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. You know, and you can say that scripture, but a woman will still choose to be uh, uh, rebellious and not do that. You know, a woman would rather die in most cases than to obey her husband. You know, a woman would rather be destroyed by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah than obey her husband the way that it's required in the scriptures. You know, let's get that word reverence in the blue letter. Let's hit play. Strong's G, 5399. Fabeo. 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 And Fabeo kind of sounds like the word phobia, you know? And in this case, B, to fear, to be afraid, to be struck with fear, to be seized with alarm, to fear, to be afraid of one, to fear, to hesitate to do something for fear of harm, to reverence. So let's just do, let's just say this one, reverence, venerate, to treat with it deference or reverential uh, obedience you know and so now let's just get the word reverence so we can understand because you know you don't want to I mean if the if your woman fears you it should be because she fears what the most high will do to her if she disobeys you that's where the fear should come from you know you should not because the, the scriptures tell you let's get it You know, Ecclesiasticus 4 and 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. You know, so don't be, you know, running, running around as, as a lion in your house. You know, a lion's ready to pounce, ready to, you know, smack, smack, some, smack somebody up and, you know, um, can be a very violent creature. 
So be be not as a lion in thy house, you know. And like the other precepts said, you know, love your wife as yourself. So like I said, the fear, the fear, if there is any, should come from the fear of Yahweh, of what what can happen to her if she breaks the commandment that Yahweh has set forth for her to obey you, for her to reverence you, to give you respect. See, a deep respect for someone or something. When you have respect for something, you, 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 you get to the level of, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, you don't want to offend that person. You know, even when you get angry, you're mindful of, you know, let me not say the wrong thing to this person. Much how the men of the Lord look at Yahweh Shai. You know, when we when when we hear something that offends our flesh, let's just give an example. The men of the Lord that have been set up by Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai. There may, not, there may be some things you may disagree with that, that, that they say. There may be a certain spirit that comes out um, or, 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 or a certain thing that is done that you may not understand and your flesh may be offended. But because you fear Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, you don't just lash out and just be like, oh no, fuck that. They wrong. And you know, you don't go off and do all that. You, you reverence Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And so you say, you know what? This is the man that these are the men that the Most High has set up. So, no, I don't understand this at this particular time why this is happening, but because I fear the Lord and I don't want to speak against his men, I'm not going to buck up. I'm not going to say no dumb shit out of my mouth. I'm not going to uh, act on emotions and the feelings of the flesh. So that's reverence, man, because you fear you. How about you? You, 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 um, you, you likewise do unto his servants, you know, as you would do unto him, man. Like I was going into into my last in, in my last lesson, man. You know, let's get it. Hebrews thirteen and seventeen. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. So now this is not exactly the one I wanted. There's another one I actually wanted. Oh, it's lucky. Okay. Ephesians 6. And I'll start at 5. Yeah. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart as unto the anointed. You know? So that's how it's supposed to be, man. Why though? Let's let's continue. Not with eye service as men pleasers. We're not doing it for the outward appearance so that somebody can look and be like, Yeah, he's a good servant. You know what? He's a he's a good brown nose. You know, he's got you know, you got your nose up somebody, you know, that's how people look at it. It's not with eye service, you know but as the servants of the anointed, doing the will of the Most High from the heart, with good will doing service as to Yahweh and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of Yahweh, whether he be bond or free. So when you do something good toward the apostles, it's, it's not necessarily for the apostles. It's for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, you know? It's not, it's not men pleasing, it's reverencing the is reverencing is is giving is paying homage to the order man you know doing things as unto the anointed you know the christians always talk about this stuff you know doing doing things do all things as unto christ you know like they like to say and you masters do the same things unto them for bearing threatening knowing that your master also is in heaven neither is there respect the persons with him you know so the most, I don't care if you're the master or the servant. You don't respect your personage, you know? Like that scripture that goes into, you know, if you see a man wearing fine clothing and you tell him to come sit here and you see a man wearing tattered up clothes and you tell him, hey, stand you over there, stand far away. That's you having respect the person. So the most, I don't see, you know, he, you know, he set these men up. But we all gonna receive the same penny, you know? Now there, there are ranks, you know, and things of that nature, but you know, the point I'm trying to make is we're all required to obey. We all have th the same type of walk. You know, there's different levels. There's different uh, 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 posts. You know, the men of the Lord, you know, like the apostles been in this thing 30 plus years. Of course, they're going to be they're, they're the top men, you know, 
but likewise they have to obey likewise they have a path to walk they have a balance that must be stricken you know they have they have guidelines and rules they have to follow they can't be you know uh what is it Let's see if I can get it. I don't think the word is a, is a tyrant. It's tyrant, but the scripture basically tells you not to be. Basically, you don't want to be a tyrant over the. Uh, Okay, Matthew 20 and 25. Let's just, let's just see, you know, to like it. Because the apostles quoted it. And I haven't, like, uh, found that scripture yet. Or, I, you know, it's not coming to mind. But I do believe, you know, uh, because it's all throughout the scriptures, you know, that you should not be um, um, harsh towards one another. You know, you do you, you are supposed to rebuke each other. But, you know, you don't want to be a tyrant over the uh, over the flock, man. Like you, twenty and twenty-five. I wish I had called unto them and said, "Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them; that they are great exercise, and that they are great exercise, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Minister means to serve, you know. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant." Even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and gave his life a ransom for many. So basically, don't be tyrants over the men of the Lord. You know, uh, if you have a flag underneath you, don't be just running brothers, you know, like they your personal slaves, man, like the apostles went into, you know, like he said, Yahweh I came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, you know. Now, if you ask a brother to help you do something, then that's, you know, it is what it is. But don't just be abusing that brother. You know, say, man, you know, tie my shoe. I got a scuff on my boot. Buff it out. Wash my clothes. I come pick them up at nine o'clock and they better be crispy. Iron them and starch them. And, you know, no, nah, man, you're doing too much, man. OK. Anyway, man, I'm getting off the topic, man. Getting off the topic. But, you know, back to like I was saying, man. Women don't have no fear of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah within them, man. You know? I hope this is recording properly. Uh, yeah, should be. You know? <clears throat> because we have things that we have to do as men of the Lord. But when it comes to the women, that are supposed to uphold their thing and and, 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 and reverence their husbands. I mean, bro, but what did Solomon say? He only found one righteous among a thousand men, and then among that same thousand, he didn't find not one righteous woman. It's very hard to find that woman, you know? That's why I said she's above uh, above rubies, man. Uh, let's see if I can find it. So lucky, my phone's a little loud. Easy ask twenty six. A shame face and faithful woman is a double grace, and her continent mind cannot be valued. It's priceless. To have a controlled mind is priceless. See, 14, a silent and loving woman is a gift of Yahweh, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. See? Very important, man. You know? Very important thing is it's, it's priceless, man. Very hard to find, very, very priceless, you know? <clears throat> even Job, um, you know, even even righteous Job had a um, 
his wife, you know, couldn't control her emotions. And you know what she said, you know, let's just get that. When he was going through the things he was going through. You know, go to a nine then said his wife unto him, dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse the most high and die. You know, so even even, you know, in this particular case, because the scriptures tell you that a wicked woman is giving a hand to a wicked, wicked man. But we know Job was not a wicked man. So, so that would mean that his wife had to be on some level, some type of a righteous woman. But even with that being said, what, what does she let come out of her mouth? At the end of the day, what does she say? Curse the most high and die. Foolishness. The fear of Yahweh is not in these women, man. It will be in the kingdom. But on this side, it's not that way. You know? So let's, you know, hey, back to that word. Ephesians 5 and 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Back to that word, phobeo. To reverence, venerate, treat with deference or reverential obedience. And then that word reverence, like I said, is to show deep respect for. And then also, like I said, when it says to be struck with fear or seized with alarm, you should be afraid that if you say the wrong thing that the most high will strike you down that the most high will fuck you up that should be a thought in your mind even if it's in the back of your mind but many many of you don't consider that you know you don't even consider that as a, as a possibility oh, man, it'll never happen like that well a lot of you gonna find out yeah i wish i ain't with that maybe under that vibration of caesar boys you're sweet jesus maybe under that vibration you can keep on being disobedient to your husband but if the men are required to show reverence, if the men are required to obey them, that have the rule over them, that are over them, how much more women who, who, who it says continuously over and over? Let's go to it. Let's just read some of these, you know, that women like to ignore. Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. Let's just click on this. Let's just open this in the next window. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Whoa, whoa. You know how many women will. Well, so what you trying to say? You God now? You God? This is a command that you've been given. But rather than say, you know what? Let me try to do that. You rather buck up. What you trying to say? You God? I'm just reading the scripture to you, man. What you trying to say? It ain't what it don't say what it say. You know? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as the anointed. Is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto the anointed so i can't have to turn this down turn it down a little bit so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing everything not some things everything you know Likewise, ye wives, being subjected to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they may also, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. And that word conversation, like the brother likes to go into in the, in the Greek, it, uh, represents your actions, man. Through your actions. And this is, this is talking about the brethren submitting themselves one to another. Because the man's not supposed to submit to the woman, okay? That ain't how that works. We could just, you know, go to that briefly. So let's see here, Ephesians 5 and 20, giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High and to the Father and the Father in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, period. That's the end of that. Then it goes to the next section where it talks about wives submitting themselves. We're supposed to submit, the men are supposed to submit themselves to the order that's been set up, you know. Now, don't blindly follow anybody confirm things in the scriptures you know be fully persuaded in your own mind you know according to the truth man because men are men men may slip they may fall they may stumble 
So you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling to some to some uh, regard. But there are men set up above you and there's an order to things, man. You ain't just get it all on your own, man. You were taught. And a 90 percent of you people out there learn from the from the apostles of GMS, man. You might have got some things here, some things there. But when it came to really deep breakdowns and stuff, you got it from the apostles of, of GMS, man, starting with Apostle Tahar on down, man. OK. And you have to respect that, man. You know, not as men pleasers. But as unto the as unto the anointed, as unto the most high, man. Like I was going into earlier, you know. So hey man, we just read a couple more, man. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Submit unto your own your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. You know? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, not to be opinionated, not to have control over yourself. It says be subject. When you have subjects, they obey what you say to do, man. So anyway, man, I think that's the point, you know, I want to give all honor, glory and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to, to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. You know, the one third uh, women and children that believe in sincerity, that are doing their best to actually follow what the Most High has commanded them to do. All right, and with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.